And, and that I just, I said, Lord, you are the great I am. I had a dream a couple of weeks ago, and in the dream, I was speaking to the four corners of, of the earth, and, I, and he, had, he said to me, the Holy Spirit was saying to me, declare I am, declare I am, declare I am, declare I am. Well, he is the I am that I am. He's the I am who you need him to be. He is the I am of Jehovah Rapha. He is the I am of Jehovah Jireh. He is the I am of Jehovah Sinkanu, your righteousness. He is the I am of Jehovah Makedesh, the guy who's the God who's always with us. See, he is the I am who I am. El Gibor, mighty God, champion God, Elohim, master, Adonai. Oh God, that's who he is. He is the one that is always there, that never leaves us nor forsakes us. He would never abandon us. He is the I am that is there for you. He bottles up your tears and he has the hairs upon your head numbered. That's who the I am is. He's the one that will break through for you. He is the breaker in Micah. It says, I am your breaker that will break through every hidden obstacle, every drug addict kid, every person that's in bondage and, and just affected from the Lord. That's who I am. I am the I am. But he says, is your faith there to believe me for that? I am the I am that will get you out of that rotten depression that's been trying to get you spiraling down to keep you out of that place of intimacy with me. He says, I am that I am. I am that I am. I am the Christ, your Messiah. I am your deliverer. I am your healer. I am the breaker that breaks things open. That is who I am. The Lord is saying to the church, do you believe me? I am that I am that I am. Oh, Lord, you are the Holy One of Israel, oh God. We just cry out to you, oh God. Forgive us where we have not trusted in you, the great I am, oh God. You are the I am that I am. You are our healer and our deliverer, oh God. Oh, you are holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are the great I am. You are our deliverer. You are the one who has defeated the enemy. You are shalom. You are the shalom, the God of peace that crushes Satan's head. That's who he is. Woo! That's who he is. He's our God. He's faithful. Don't you ever underestimate who he is. He breaks through every obstacle. Oh, Shebra, oh, you go, Shebra. Oh, Lord, we worship and exalt your name, oh God. We worship you, oh God, the God who breaks through. Oh, Jesus. You are our Savior. You're our Redeemer. You are the I Am. You are the great I am, oh God. Oh, Shebra Sete. Thank you, Lord. He can do all things. The Bible says that with me, nothing shall be called impossible. Nothing. And just like there was this time here where there was that battle that was between the two. He said, how long were you going to limp between two opinions? How long? And so what happened was, he says, you pray to your God, I pray to my God. And the God who answers by fire will break through. That's our God. He answers by fire. He breaks through the complacency. The fire burns the dross out of our life. That's the fire. That's what God wants us to live. That's how he wants us to live, to be fire-breathing Christians. Not religious, not self-righteous that look down on people, but fire breathing. Where we know our God and we will do great exploits. Hallelujah. So then he said to them, hey, wait a minute. Before I call down the fire in 1 Kings 18.30, he says, we need to rebuild our altar. And that's what we're talking about today. We're going to rebuild our altar of intimacy. He's going to say, listen, you have to rebuild your prayer time, your intimate time. You have to get a fresh download, fresh revelation. I don't care what you heard last week. What's the fresh download you heard from God? What's the fresh word that I need, that you need? And it says here, before they were able to, to, to call down the fire, he said, we have to repair the altar. And that word repair, when you look it up in the Hebrew, means rafa. 
It means to heal. So heal the brokenness of our heart. Heal the areas of our heart where we haven't been able to get before the Lord because we don't think God's going to answer our prayers or, or we, we've been disappointed. Some, some of us might be mad at God. It's taken too long. Or, or family issues or church issues. You know, some of you may have been hurt in church. Listen, you're going to get hurt. It's just the bottom line. We have to learn how to deal with our offenses because you're dealing with human beings. Right? It's not like we're intentional, but stuff happens. You got a family, right? You get mad at them too, right? So, um, you know, but that's the thing. It doesn't make it right, but we have to learn how to get past that and get healed. So he said, we have to repeal, repair this altar because the altar's not going to fall on man-made rules. The, the fire, rather, is going to fall on, on the direction and the strategy of Holy Spirit. So in Revelation, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 1, it says that we have to be the living sacrifice, right? Holy, true, worship, acceptable to the Lord. Lord, I'm laying myself down on the altar. And it's easy to preach it until you get mad at somebody, until you have a fight with somebody. So you don't agree with somebody. It's easy to do this, right? It's easy to just say, yes, Lord, I'm a living sacrifice. So they get on your every last nerve. But see, that's where then again, we ask God to help us and that we don't camp out there. And we don't, because remember, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little foxes that want to keep you in that place, that messed up place of defeat because you're going to, your opinion is greater than somebody else's, right? So, so God is calling for us to rest, a restoration of the altar. And if you're not praying daily, and I don't mean like five minutes on your way to work. I mean, take your time before the Lord. We, you know what? We would always say, okay, if you pray in the car. No. That, that was then. We need to set our time aside to pray. Give him the honor. Do him. And it's between you and the Holy Spirit. But, but you need to pray. We need to hear the spirit of the Lord. We, hear, we need to hear what God is saying. Right? So God is calling us to, for this Elisha mantle. And I wrote here, the fear of the Lord, that we walk in the fear of the Lord, not fear of man, not worried about what man's going to say. Does it line up with the word? That's what I'm concerned about.